Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Cantec webinar series. Uh, today, we're going to talk about integrations with Cantec, and we have here on our on the webinar here our partner uh, Savants, which has some cool stuff to show us with the integration of Cantec. So, uh, Steve, you know, just explain yourself what you guys do. Absolutely. Yep. So we're, we kind of specialize in business automation. Uh, a couple things that we focus on are um, staff tracking, like an electronic and outboard. Uh, visitor management, emergency mustering, large screen displays, and time in attendance. So we kind of extend with that badge and do a lot more than you know what uh, what just access control can provide to you. And uh, so we ex just extend the capabilities quite a bit. Very good. You guys have been in this for many years, I believe, correct? Absolutely. Yep. So Savance has been around for a little over 20 years. Uh, I'm one of the original founders, so I have uh, quite a bit of experience both with Savants and with the industry, and uh, just excited to share a little bit with uh, with the Cantec group here. All right, that's very nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys what's required on the Cantec side, uh, which is very easy, uh, and then uh, Steve will show us what the, their product can do and so on. So on the Cantec side, it's very simple. It does require Entropass Corporate Edition uh, or Global Edition. It is also available with Hattrix if you ever needed to. It's the same interface for all three. So whether you have Corporate or Global or, again, Hattrix, no problems. What's required is the Smart Link, which is what manages your web. So most of you guys out there that have a Corporate or Global Edition have the Entropass web uh, operational and ready to go. So it's very simple. You just install the smart link, which you have. Now, the integration itself requires two things on the Cantec side. One, we need to make a, a license. So under options and registration, we go to the connected program on the left here, and we click here to install components, and we register your license. You need to buy a license for every integration you have, and also for every concurrent login the integration needs. In this example, the, the, the Savant integration, in 99% of the cases, would only need one license per server because it's one login at a time. Now imagine we had 20 of their servers connecting to one Cantex server, which is very unlikely, but it can happen. That would require 20 licenses at that moment because they they could all log in at the same time. So it's concurrent logins that are required. One is usually enough. So once I've registered the license on our website under cantech.com and I activate it, it's going to give me a connected partner license. The connected partner license is available here, and, and Savant is currently integration 69. In the upcoming version of the software, these will be relabeled accordingly because we have extra seats, and as we, we give them, we actually rename them. So if you have 8.20, uh, it will be integration number 59, and uh, if not in the future, it will be uh, Savant itself. So I choose my license, and I hit Edit. And from the dropdown, I simply go and pick the number that corresponds. As you see, there's many and some are labeled, uh, so I picked the right one. That's as simple as I want. If I want to give them two licenses, two logins, I would have to plug in another connected port connection here. If I had another integration relevant to this integration, I would have to buy another connected license because this license is tied to Semantics. Once that is done, I'm like 90% done under the system portion and operator, right? And uh, system and operator, in here, you need to create an operator. So once I have an operator, I can make a new operator and I give him a username and password. So name, I name the operator, a login and password. And I give them the security that they need. And they can have access to all my entire database or if you want to water it down, you could say, you know what? I only want you to see building one because this server is for building one, the next server is for building a two. Personally, I just give them access to all the events and the transactions and so on, maybe less rights to write stuff just for security purposes. So they can't add stuff, let's say, or if anybody has that password, 
But then the workspace, I can give them access to everything because the filtering can be done live afterwards instead of doing it here and then changing your mind halfway through, give them access to everything. And then the, in, the, in the integration software, you can pick which reader is required. That's all you really need. Uh, you need to sort of log in and security levels. Under the web parameters, your web settings are already done. So you don't need to change anything whatsoever. Unless you want to, yeah, there's nothing else to change here. So it's all default stuff. And then you can save the operator. Now this login name and password cannot have the word Cantic in it. Those that have the any password or the word Cantic in it a lower or uppercase aren't allowed. So you have to change the logins for security purposes. And that's really all you need for the Cantic side. Now you need to make sure obviously your enterprise web or your enterprise go are operational, which are covered on a different Cantic webinar series uh, available on YouTube, right? And now once those are done and you have the connected license, we can now connect to our integration partner. And now, one last thing for Hattrix, it is very, very similar. You simply have to activate the license in your respective account. You don't need to add a license. You simply activate it in the cloud partners through Hattrix. See you. Perfect. No, yeah, appreciate you taking them through what, what the technical details are. Uh, I'm going to do a little more high level just on... Um, you know, as far as uh, uh, some of the details here. Um, so a couple things that we focus on, just like I mentioned. Um, first, with the integration, the big part that we're going to be doing is two things. Uh, one, well, really three. One, we, we bring in all of the people that you specify uh, from Cantec and their associated credentials. The second thing that we're doing is monitoring door events. Uh, so each door event can be translated to whether the person is in or in a meeting or whatever. So they translate directly to a location and what we call a status. So that is the critical part to feed our in outboard. So we know who's around, who's available, who's at lunch, uh, mainly for increased productivity, uh, improved communication, better accountability and so forth. In addition, the second step is that we actually uh, use that for mustering. So we know everybody who's supposed to be at a location. And then in the event of an emergency, we can pull a tablet. The tablet has a, a badge ready to read a Cantec badge to be able to say, hey, boom, Tom just showed up. Fred just showed up. Now they're accounted for. You get down to a list of just who's not accounted for. So we've got some really good emergency management and emergency mustering as well as mass notification features as well. The other thing we get into is large screen status board displays. These are very customizable. We've done everything from showing just a basic and outboard with different people's status. This has become uh, increasingly important when you're looking at occupancy percentages and such. Uh, but they could also, you know, pre-COVID, we're, we're just more about like where people are, who's in the office, who's not in the office and all that sort of stuff. So very configurable, very customizable. We can mix content to show things like news, announcements, weather, and all that other stuff that uh, can go along. And it can be very location specific. So automatically as people come in through a door, we know that they're at that location. We don't need any extra uh, workload on top of that to uh, have somebody maintain their status. However, if somebody is adamant about getting the most out of the solution, you can add things like a kiosk and other options for different types of interfaces like an iPhone app, an Android app, a kiosk, uh, mobile tools, the browser that lets you see this information and as a person update that information. So prior to COVID, we were very uh, close knit with tracking people, tracking for emergency purposes, and just having a general snapshot of various types of information. And then of course our visitor management captured and got rid of that paper logbook that uh, was traditional. And we started on the basis of kiosks. So we were, you know, instead of just starting with like an attended where you needed a person, we decided that we would have a strong attended, but we wanted to make sure 
we went with a very unattended or hybrid type approach where it was very kiosk based, super professional looking experience throughout the process, pair that up with nice, attractive, affordable hardware. And that's kind of where our visitor management comes into play. Highly configurable, can request any type of information, print out nice name tags, activate badges, for example, print name tags with barcodes on them, send out notifications of the host. So quite a bit of, of detail here that you can do with our visitor management. Now, what, I'm, what I wanna talk about today is specifically uh, COVID value, right? So as COVID hit, you know, the first kind of preview we had was our existing customers started to ask us, uh, hey, how can I add uh, questions? Have you, you know, traveled outside of the country in the last 30 days? Have you gone to China? Different things like that started to come up. And we thought, boy, you know what? This is going to be a good opportunity for us to pitch in and help. Uh, we can have questions that, uh, you know, are experiencing any flu-like symptoms and so forth. And then as temperature started to play a role in the process, we heard that screening was going to be important in addition to the questions, temperature. So we evaluated several temperature pieces of hardware that we felt were gonna be a good fit with us that we could communicate with electronically. And we standardized on a product that basically was traditionally a facial recognition system, but they were a 20 year old company that adapted and said, hey, we can basically have use the technology that, that where people line up their face to then use a, a infrared sensor, the same technology that a temporal scanner uses to take a quick snapshot of their forehead temperature and then immediately report that. Now, what's cool is that we can now uniquely pair up both a screening for staff as well as visitors. Because remember, we were doing staff tracking, we were doing visitor management. So we had all the pieces of the puzzle just waiting. And now we can say, okay, hey, you can add a temperature scanner, you pair it up with a kiosk, and you've got everything you need to have a very effective, reportable contact tracing. And then of course, we just had to add a couple options. We had to add support for the temperature device. The other thing that we um, thought was critical was to give the option to go touchless. So touchless meaning you walk up and either you just have a 2D barcode that you scan, or you've got the kiosk and the kiosk has a 2D barcode on it, but you in essence, walk up and you start the process from your own device rather than having to touch anything. And then your device actually interacts with that temperature scanner. So again, you can automatically do that. The other thing that we figured that was important that we already did was we already could control the door or activate a badge or print a barcode and activate that barcode so you could get through a turnstile. But we thought it was critical to be able to do that with the temperature scanning. So again, after you go through a successful screening, we can do a couple things, either, like I said, do something where we could activate, you know, kind of a custom type setup where we activate a barcode or we activate a credential uh, on Cantech. Or one of the simplest implementations is we sell and offer this PoE relay module where after you go through the screening, it basically sends out a command on the local network to turn on a relay for a given number of seconds. And that in turn can control a turnstile or a door or something like that. So that way you can have kind of a, a dual pass type. Okay, hey, we got into the first door, but now to get past the second door, you have to go through the screening, for example. So we can really architect a really nice solution to help organizations you know, kind of with their COVID screening so they don't have to have such an arduous and manual or paper-based process. The other thing that we thought was critical was adding an option to automatically clean the screen. So we partnered with a company that uh, manufactures UV light cleaners. And prior to COVID, it was mostly for the medical industry. But after COVID, we said, hey, this is a great addition to be able to offer, it basically detects motion. When you, when you pull away, it goes through a cleaning cycle where it emits the UV light. 
and then kills bacteria and viruses. And then once it goes through its cycle, it remains dormant until you walk up and it detects motion again. And then again, that cycle repeats. So good, nice addition. It's got a little blue light to show you when it's cleaning and uh, does, a, does a nice job of uh, you know, giving somebody an option to still have a kiosk, but yet a peace of mind that uh, it's, it's not a, a germ factory, if you will. The other thing that you can do is mount um, you know, a hand sanitizer uh, unit onto the device. We've got a bracket that, uh, and, and the hand sanitizer itself that we offer. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, and then, like I said, the, the touch list as well as the deep reporting. Uh, we've always had customizable reporting, which gave us the Im immediate ability to uh, add instantly with our custom fields and the custom questions and that sort of stuff. Then once we added the temperature scanning as an option, now you can pull up in any time between date ranges, staff, employees, contractors. You can pull up and have these delivered to you. Hey, show me an audit trail of last week, last month. Show me a contact tracing report of this person. They came when they came in and who they might have come in contact with based on doors and based on activity and date ranges. So again, a very uh, technologically capable system of using the data that now you're retrieving to be way better than what a paper process would be, okay? So that's really high level. Obviously, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, you know, the most important part for us is just to kind of explain what's out there. What we want everybody to know is that if this is of interest to you, <clears throat> either yourself, your customer, uh, whatever that might be, we are more than happy to sit down and really our approach is uh, we're, we're more of a solution provider. So our plan is to understand what the needs are, what the entrance looks like, what you're doing today, what your business needs are, uh, whether you know everybody's carrying a badge, how are visitors handled today, what's the visitor volume, all of that stuff to really take a look at then deciding, okay, what sort of tools do we wanna to pull together uh, in order to build the right solution for the organization? So we'll really craft, you know, okay, hey, maybe they just need one kiosk. Maybe they need just the temperature scanner. Maybe they just need touchless. Whatever it might be, do they need badge readers uh, with the kiosk? All of those things we'll figure out labels, uh, you know, and then we'll work up, all right, well, here's here's what you're gonna be looking at for a design, and then here's what you're gonna be looking at uh, from a price point, and uh, really approach it from more of not just, hey, here's a product that you're getting and you're on your own, but here, let us design the right solution for you, come up with the right price, and then be there for you during the implementation uh, so that way you end up with a very professional looking solution, uh, just like I've shown you here where, you know, every solution that we offer is, is uh, top notch and very professional, yet still affordable. That's important to remember too. You know, it's not uh, uh, a unit like this isn't 20,000 plus, uh, it's, it's in the affordable range for, for folks as well. And I think that's it, Tom. Maybe we can open it up to questions. I think that's a good high-level approach. I don't want to get too deep down into the weeds uh, since there's such a vast, and I know we wanted to have a follow-up where we deep dive into some of our visitor management and some of our other options. And today was big on uh, what can we do to help folks with COVID uh, and specifically the screening questions and that sort of stuff. There's a ton of options out there, a ton of opportunity to uh, help automate some of the stuff that a lot of people are either hiring uh, uh, nurse staff uh, or manually taking temperature, writing things down, uh, stopping people at the gate, pulling them over. You know, so there's a lot of opportunity to, uh, to, to address this. And I think a lot of people are realizing this isn't just gonna be a week or two. And the nice part about our system is it goes beyond just after this is implemented, you know, remember at the core, there was a business already that existed that was about 
visitor management, staff tracking, the display boards, and so forth. So even after, let's say in six months, they come out with Cure, everybody's happy, it's not as uh, strict to take temperature and screen and all that other stuff, you just adapt our solution back to what it, its core value was, and it's not just a boat anchor that you throw in the in the back of the building or throw out or something. Very good, very good. That was very informative. Thank you. Yeah, so, no problem. Before we open up for questions, you guys can start asking the questions. Um, uh, again, uh, this will be available on YouTube uh, shortly. Uh, with all the other videos, please uh, visit us at uh, Can Take Access or Can Take Webinar Series, and then they will all be there. So, uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys next uh, every week. Actually, 